This is a lesson on writing key signatures. Um, for this lesson, um, I'm assuming you have a certain amount of knowledge about what a key signature is um, or how the circle of fifths works. You need a, perhaps a basic knowledge of that. Um, so this lesson is just on writing the actual key signatures themselves. Um, so firstly, let's draw up a quick stave. Um, and if you're into music and you're looking at this video, I'm sure you've, you've seen a stave and you know that this is a treble clef. Um, now, in order to identify what sharps and flats are in our uh, key signatures, it's really, really useful to be using one of the sayings to work it out. Now, a really old one that I was taught uh, is Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Um, getting a little bit dated with my students these days, so instead of that, I use fish can't get drunk after eating bait. It's kind of funny, um, and the students tend to remember that quite well. So, uh, essentially, we can use this in two different directions, depending on whether our key signature has sharps or flats. So if I use, um, just to start off with, the key signature of G major, um, which I know has one sharp, that sharp is going to be, well, using our saying, our sharps start from this side and work their way that way. So if there's one sharp, that must be an F sharp. And because it's an F sharp, it has to sit right on top of the F line. Now, very occasionally I do see the odd student pop it down here at the bottom, because in fact, that spot is F as well. And so it makes sense that potentially it could go in either spot. However, uh, musical convention says, oh, raise, musical convention says that we use that top one instead. So we're going to use that top F. Now if we look at a slightly more complex key signature, and let's take A major for example. So let me get rid of that one. Let me switch over to A major. I know that A major has three sharps. And using my saying at the top here, I can see that those sharps would be F, C, and G. So the three from the left hand side. So we've got our F sharp, then we put in our C sharp, and we put in our G sharp. Now notice that the middle of our sharps are exactly where that note would be if it was a note. So if I was to draw these as notes, I would have F, C, G. So when we draw our sharps, they essentially centre right on top of where those notes would otherwise exist. That's important so we can recognise exactly which sharp they are. We know what they are. Okay. And it just goes on like that. As the key signatures get more complex with more sharps in them, um, they just go on in that order. So if we have four sharps, for example, we'd have F, C, G, and D. D would go here. Or F, C, G, D, A. Now when you're writing the A, it does jump down to this one. So just be aware of that. It goes down, E sharp, and then last of all, B sharp. And that's how our key signature looks if it's got sharps in it. Okay, now we need to take a few steps back. So I'm going to delete this again. I'm going to draw myself a new stave and then we're going to look at flats. So I'll do my stave. I'm going to do a treble clef again. Um, and then my saying, fish can't get drunk after eating bait. And last time I said that our sharps go in this direction. Well, the flats work in the same way, but they just go in the opposite direction. So if we have one flat, it will be a B flat. Okay? And that flat, and that flat would go right on that B line there. Notice how the line travels directly through where the note would go if it was a note. Okay, 
Um, so B flat, if we have two flats, we'd have B and E. If we have three, we'd have B, E and A. If we have four, we'd have B, E, A, D. And they occur always in that order. So B, E, so that's our E flat. A flat goes in the A space. D flat on the D line. And we keep going on. G, C, F. Again, and whilst some of these notes do have uh, potentially two places where they could be, it's convention that says we do them in this way. With the flats, sort of easy to think of it as two sort of descending lines like that. And then you, you can see that it always goes down. Okay. Um, in the bass clef, um, it's handy to just know where your bass line notes are. Um, but there is one easy way to remember that. So I'll just draw yet another stave. We'll put a bass clef on there. And the best way to think about it is everything is just a full space or a full line down. So we'll do our sharps again. Fish can't get drunk after eating bait. Um, and then if we have an F sharp, it would be the line below where it would be in the treble clef. Same with the C. You're not in the space above, you've actually brought that down. Or you brought that down. And the pattern is essentially the same. Okay? Uh, and it's the same thing with your flats. So I hope this helps you with uh, writing out your key signatures correctly.